Thanks for joining me today at EMP CycleWorks. We're building a twin cam. This is part two where we finish up using great parts including Woods cam, fueling lifters, SNS crank. Let's do it. Over here on the bench, these are used cylinders, or the cylinders that came off the bike, and they're a little bit dingy, so I'm just gonna take some pretty fine sandpaper on a sanding block. Just clean them up. I look like that when I'm done. These cylinders just got machined to accept 10 thousandths bigger pistons and cleaning off, making sure the cylinder bores are very clean is uh, important here. And I use soap and water to do this. I, I realize my sink is kind of dirty looking. Oh, it is dirty, but I, you know, the cylinder never touches the, the, the sink at all. I know it doesn't look good in the video, but so I use soap and water in my hand and uh, do this a couple times just to make sure it's it's uh, very clean. And then once it's rinsed off well, I blow it off the compressed air and hit it with oil. Otherwise it's gonna rust using water like this. The second step in cleaning these cylinders is to use a microfiber rag, a lint-free rag, I should say. And uh, I use engine oil and uh, wipe it off the inside of the cylinder bore. I do this a few times and the goal here is to have the, the rag come out clean. A lot of people use automatic transmission fluid. I just didn't have any and uh, engine oil does pretty much the same thing. So I only videoed uh, me doing this once or twice, but rest assured I did it three or four times. And uh, here me doing the rear cylinder. And then you use a white lint-free rag and wipe it out one more time just to make sure that the cylinder bore is completely clean. And I did this earlier, but I'm just showing it now, is um, making sure the clearance between the wrist pin and the small end of the rod is within spec. So I use my uh, small hole gauge to measure the rod and my micrometer to measure the wrist pin and my calculator to figure out the clearance. Now it's time to get the wrist pin clips in so I put one of them on the bench, uh, stick it in the groove, and use a pick and uh, just pop it in. Honestly, it took me a lot longer than I'm showing you here to do it. And now we're looking for the orientation of the rings that CP wants on these pistons. These are 10.75 to one compression pistons. I gotta show this more in depth, but you don't want the gaps of the rings to line up with each other. Uh, so basically you use four different points to line up the the rings and clock them uh, 90 degrees from each other. When you buy rings or pistons from, from a company, they're going to give you usually a diagram to explain all this, and it's also in the service manual. So in this instance, the oil control rings go on, and then the two oil rings, and then the second scraper ring which has a specific orientation um, dictated by a dot on it and then the top ring goes on and in this case it it is universal and go either way and I just use my my fingers to spread it apart you don't want to go too crazy you don't want to damage the ring but just spread it apart enough to get it into the, the piston grooves and then once you get it in you want to make sure that all the rings are still oriented the way that, that they need to be. And it's time to use assembly lube on the small end of the, the rod and on the wrist pin. And also the wrist pin bores in the piston. Twin cam engines use O-rings as the base gaskets, and they also have an O-ring for the oil return ports um, in the blocks. So make sure these O-rings get installed, and double check before the cylinder goes on that they're, they're um, still installed correctly. And I have 
little PVC pipes here that I use to protect the piston against the, the cylinder studs and the piston rings. So they just help make sure nothing gets scratched. And install the piston, piston pin. And remember, most pistons are directional, so they need to be installed in the correct direction. And make sure you put rags or something in to protect yourself from dropping anything into the cylinder bore of the case, because nothing worse than dropping the wrist pin clip in, down inside the case while you're working on it. And again, these took me forever to get installed. I definitely edited that down. So engine oil on the piston rings and on the piston skirts. And you want to be pretty liberal here. You want to make sure everything is nice and oiled. And the same thing with the cylinder bore. I'm going to squirt a bunch of squirts of oil in here and, and, and move it around. And make sure the oil is completely covered the inside of the, the spigot bore. And this is how I get the cylinders installed. I use an automotive style ring compressor, uh, the band clamp style. And I make sure that the you install the, the band opposite of the way that it says on there because they're made to install the piston from the top and double check make sure your o-ring is installed in the cylinder remove your pvc stud guards and yep, make sure your o-ring is installed properly and then holding the piston just gently shake it down and make sure the studs go in the the holes of the cylinder properly remove the fan clamp which can be easier said than done, at least for the first one, because the, the crank wants to spin. And I want to make sure and double check that the piston rings are installed in the spigot correctly. Fish out the ring compressor. Make sure my O-rings are still installed properly. And then lower the cylinder into the case and the front cylinder is installed. Same process for the rear cylinder. I'm just going to speed it up here a little bit. Everything's nice and oiled. Move your PVC. Oil the cylinder. Here's a good look at me installing the O-ring. Cylinder's nice and oiled. And you can see there's no rust anywhere for me using water to, to clean it. And here the studs kind of get in the way. And you want to hold down the front cylinder when you push this down too. They make tools to hold it down but I'm not gonna be spitting this motor. The heads are going on rather quickly here. So I'm cleaning up the excess oil that's on top of the piston, that can cause it to hydro lock when you first turn it over. Now we install our head gaskets, making sure we have the proper orientation, which is kind of hard to do on these. They only go one way, really. Install our heads, indexing the heads onto the dowel pins of the cylinder. front head same way you can run into where the gasket kind of gets in between the dowel and the, the cylinder head so you just got to watch out for that you never want to use any force installing these and now we're gonna lube up the heads of the cylinder bolts as well as the threads so I just I lube up the heads first and then then, then do a drop of oil in the threads that'll make sure we get the proper torque and eliminate drag when we do our torque sequence. So install the bolts. These Kometic head gaskets use a specific torque sequence. So we have nine foot pounds to start. Low to high, left to right is basically how I remember it. And then we go 14 foot-pounds in the same sequence.
22 foot pounds again in the same sequence And right there, I torqued that one the wrong in the wrong sequence. It's supposed to go low to high. And then 35 foot pounds. I probably should have edited this down, but I wanted to kind of show you the the proper torque se sequence that these head gaskets use. See right there, I corrected myself. And of course, somebody came in the door as I'm doing this. And then final torque is 42 foot-pounds in the same sequence. And that is how you torque down Cometic head gaskets on a twin cam. The Milwaukee 8s are slightly different. And then I just go through and make sure everything is still at 42 foot pounds. Uh, they can change based on different head stress from the torquing procedure. I'm gonna get the manifold installed, put the two bolts in the back first so that the manifold flanges can index under them and then install the front bolts. And it's a quarter inch Allen, so I have a ball Allen on a socket they use to tighten those down. And then the rear, we use 5 16 18 six point bolts so we can use a open-ended wrench to tighten it down. Now we get our timing set installed, making sure the dots line up so they're timed properly. Red Loctite on these bolts. The pinion bolt is going to get 25 foot pounds, and the cam sprocket bolt will get 35 foot pounds. Make sure I put our lock in place so we can actually torque these. So that's 25 foot pounds on the pinion again, and then we'll move up to 35 for the cam sprocket. We make sure we remove our gear lock here add assembly lube to the chain and the sprocket so everything's nice and lube when we first turn this on and also lube the tensioner and these bolts are going to get blue loctite and torque them to 120 inch pounds for the tensioner I usually double check to make sure the torque is correct and then i didn't miss anything just two bolts here but still double check now it's time to get the pushrod tubes installed, so I'm going to start by installing the o-rings in the lifter blocks and in the heads. And then also there's an o-ring in between the pushrod tubes that you need to install. Now these are Screaming Eagle pushrods and they have an intake and an exhaust. And here I am checking the thread pitch just to make sure I get the adjustment properly. These are 24 threads per inch so that means that the push rides need to be tuned out uh, two and a half turns to get the proper engagement into the, the lifter where we're looking to be about a hundred thousandths in the travel of the lifter assembly lube on the push rods and then we're going to install them If these were solid push rods, I would install the push rod tubes, but since we have to adjust them, I'm just getting them in here to get them ready. So, rocker box lower gaskets go on. Make sure you feed the compression release to the front or into the inside of the motor, I mean, because the connections are above the throttle body. And then there's a channel for the breather that we need to make sure we have indexed properly. Rocker box lowers on, blue Loctite on the bolts, and I like to get two in here just to get them started to make sure the gasket and the lower rocker box lines up, which can be a pain sometimes, but it's nice and easy when you're doing this on a bench and not in the bike, and the bike makes the rocker boxes a little bit more difficult, 
and then there's o-rings for the breathers that go on be below the rocker arm support plates and these things are going to get assembly lube and assembly lube on the rocker arm shafts and also assembly lube inside the rockers and they only go on one way so it's pretty pretty hard to put these on incorrectly but I'm using assembly lube just so I know these things are nice and greased or oiled before I turn it on for the first time I don't want anything being dry especially in the motor and the shafts are clearanced for the front bolt to go through that stops the shaft from spinning as the rocker arm articulates it stops the shaft from moving with the rocker arm and that is where a locker rocker would go if you installed those. It can help help with a little bit of noise, top end noise. But this bike doesn't have those. So we put blue Loctite in all these fasteners and torque them to spec. Fortunately, I didn't get that on camera. So here I am getting top dead center on the rear compre the rear cylinder by feeling the intake lifter move up and then down and as soon as it moves down then um, you're top dead center and we can adjust the push rods now these push rods have four flats on the upper push rod tube so we need to go two and a half turns so that would be make us go ten flats And again, this is a lot easier without the intake manifold on, which I had to remove, as you may have, as you may have noticed, because the both of the intake flanges were, were broken or cracked, so I had to get new ones. And this is 58 millimeter throttle body, so I didn't have any at the shop, so I had to go to Harley and get them. And then we lock down the nut, and here's how I do it with my scissor method. Puts good torque on it and limits the limits slipping. Once the, once the rear cylinder's push rods spin, then we can adjust the front and put the clips on and we're all good. Now I'm going to install the breathers. And then get the diaphragm and the, the oil soaking sponge. I don't really know what you call that. I should probably look that up. And then the two gaskets. And then the 3 8 bolt, which is a quarter 20 so it's going to get 10 foot pounds with blue Loctite on the fasteners and now I'm going to get that throttle body back installed then we got our upper rocker box gaskets and these only go on one way so just line up the the gasket surfaces you should be able to figure it out pretty easy blue lock in all these fasteners and they get torqued to 168 inch pounds And then we'll get the cam cover installed. Make sure you get the gasket oriented right and blue Loctite on these fasteners. And these fasteners get torqued to 110 inch pounds. And again, I use two bolts to kind of line up the gasket with the cover. That way it makes, you know, installing it easier I don't have to fumble around with the gasket. So as long as I get two in there, the gasket should be right. And then the rest of the bolts will go in pretty easy. And then again, torque them to 120 inch pounds. And then time to get the motor installed here. So make sure you put the motor to transmission gasket in. And then install the motor. So I use two jacks, one jack with a piece of wood holding the transmission up and the other 
jack with a piece of wood holding up the motor. That way I can line up, you know, put the motor and the transmission on the same plane. And we have to index the, the dowel pins at the bottom and then install the bolts with blue Loctite. Thank you for watching part two of this 103 cubic inch twin cam build. If you liked the video, like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you very much from EMP Cycle Works.